so Derek didn't medal that day, obviously. He didn't get his best time. Did he do his best? Yeah. Sometimes our conditions are different day to day, right? We might be in grief. We might have an injury. We might be ill. We might be exhausted. And so our best in that moment or on that day isn't going to look the same as it would in another day. And so often when we think about this fourth agreement, always do our best, it's that striving kind of idea, right? I can better what I did last time, and it's that kind of constant striving. But Derek's story reminds us of the heart of what this agreement is about, is that no matter what the situation Whatever is given to me, I do the best with what I have in the place that I am in that moment. And that's really the essence of what this fourth agreement is all about. So we've been, for those of you just joining us, we're wrapping the series, The Four Agreements, based on the book by Don Miguel Ruiz. And, um, and this last one is a lot like our fifth principle in unity. In unity, we have the, the first uh, four principles about the nature of God and the nature of us and the co-creative principle of what we think and feel and how that manifests in the world and the key of prayer and meditation. And the last principle is live it. It's action. And it's similarly, in the four agreements, this last agreement is sort of the embodiment of the others. You know, it's the beingness of it. So if we are always doing our best, then we are probably working those other agreements. And hopefully, if we're doing it consciously, it helps us if we're consciously intending that. So that first agreement, to be impeccable with our word. And the second one is to not take anything personally. And then the last one, to not make assumptions. And so when we do our best to to be all of these, there is that sort of holistic sense of who we are. And that's a big part, too, I think, of what this agree- this, all the agreements are about, because it encompasses relationships and how we want to be with one another, how we see each other as groups, and how we see ourselves and sometimes limit ourselves. So the key really, as the key is to really all of our work in unity and and new thought and all of our spiritual journey to be the best that we can be, is, is to know the very best that is within us, right? So we know that that aspect of us, the very best of us, is the divine, is the spirit of us which is really the allness of us. But, you know, for, for understanding purposes, we, we have that sense of that innate knowing within us, that very best, that indomitable spirit, like Derek was really showing us there, you know? That's what, what moves us, isn't it? When we see the indomitable human spirit rising and moving through us and doing things we didn't think were possible or doing things in the midst of great pain and heartbreak. But the determination is there. Winning isn't about competition, much as we might you know, see it that way in all the ways that we, we roll it out in our games and our sports. But winning is never really about competition. Winning is about commitment. And it's the commitment to be the best that we can be and to draw forth the very best of us. So how we do that is, is to know that. First of all, to recognize that we have this innate divinity, that we have this spirit in us, that that is the very best of us showing up when we move and allow that to move through us and to be us. And so getting to know it, recognizing it, is really kind of the second step, right? So our time together when we meditate or when you meditate on your own or when you pray or when you're doing something that you love and you feel that sense of flow or you're out in nature, Those moments when you get to know the texture and the feel, the emotion and the sense of presence, the deep peace, the sense of all, I'm perfect and whole just as I am. Isn't that a lovely thing when we come to that? So the antithesis of this agreement can be kind of that striving, but the essence of this agreement is that knowing. I am perfect, I am whole, I'm spirit, I'm divine. 
And so the more we visit that place within us, that core of us, the more versed we get at the, the little nudges, the, the um, guidance, the intuition that comes from spirit. And the more versed we get at that, the more we recognize very easily that voice or that feeling that says go or slow or no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or when we open to that and we hear words that we didn't, you know, and anticipate, that's the best. When, we, when we're guided, we're sort of surprised by the guidance that comes. Because then we know we're really not just thinking it up, but we're actually opening to a, a deeper wisdom. In the first service, um, as I was opening to that deeper wisdom in the 930 meditation, I heard Spirit say, who are you? And then I just sat with that and said, well, I'm divine. You know, that's the right answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, but then there was another, no, who are you? And then the question kept coming, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? And I came to this divine earth. I didn't come to it. That's what I got, divine earth. And so I was just, you know, you never know what's going on with all of us, right, during meditation time. So I'm just sharing a little bit of this because it's coming out of my mouth, not because I plan to. <laughs> so it's sort of fun to just go with whatever's there, right? <laughs> but that I was just being with that, you know, divine earth. So, I, you know, I can't tell you exactly what it was about, but it felt like real and true and like something really beautiful about that oneness with body and earth divine and human. And that's where we are at our best. When we are in that sort of dialogue or feeling experience with the, the best of us, that's when our best work gets done. That's when our best interactions, our deepest connections happen. That's when the truest love comes through us. The most creative things happen because we are, we've accessed that flow, we've accessed that truth, we've accessed that wisdom that is there for us always. What gets in the way is just all the stuff of life that gets in the way, right? Our distractions, our, our thinking, our assumptions, our, thing, our taking things personally. I mean, a lot of the agreements really speak to us of what gets in the way. When we go against ourselves, remember that in the um, be impeccable with your word agreement, and we broke down that word, the essence of peccatus means sin, and the way that Don Miguel talked about sin was when you go against yourself. That's sin, when we go against ourselves. And so when we are with ourselves and we realize we are, we are there, that, that, the wholeness, that sense of there's nothing to add, there's nothing to, you know, it's not like, it's not coming out of this place of inadequacy. It's coming out of our fullness that we bring forth the best. It doesn't mean we don't work hard. Don't you think Derek worked hard to get to that point in the Olympics? I mean, imagine you work as hard as you possibly can to get your, your body in the best possible shape you can for four years. And then the thing you just wish could never, ever happen to you happens, right? And it happens to us in all kinds of different ways in our lives, doesn't it? The things we didn't expect to happen, the people that were close to us that we lost unexpectedly, the, the breakups that, we, uh, that happened, the disappointments. You know, this is the human journey, and it's like I always like to remind myself and all of us that we signed up for this, you know? <laughs> when it gets tough to remember, I, at some point I did make a commitment to my spiritual evolution and the evolution of humanity and the opening and, and calling forth of the best that is here to be on earth by coming and being incarnated. And so when we remember, yeah, I chose to be here, I signed up for this in the most difficult of times, that's a way of doing our best because it's the best we have to offer ourselves of reassurance, of lifting ourselves up, of not giving up, of going on, of knowing that there is a breakthrough. And you know, when we're at our lowest of lows, you know what's around the corner, right? The biggest of breakthroughs. If we can just stay with it, stay with it, even when it's hard, just stay with it. There will be a sense of the very best of us is available 
to us and through us and as us. So when we say yes to spirit, it is the essential step, really, to, to being this agreement, to being this agreement in action, to always do our best. And doing our best is really just doing what we love, you know, doing what comes naturally to us. I like to think of Forrest Gump as being the, the, you know, the poster child for this. Everybody see Forrest Gump or know, know the story? Some of you may not remember it or maybe haven't heard of it. It's, it's a pretty, um, it's a movie by Tom Hanks was the, the lead. He, he played Forrest and I don't know how many years ago it came out. But anyway, Forrest Gump is simply and beautifully and naturally and fully himself. He fully accepts himself, accepts life situations, accepts all the people around him. And he does amazing things. Do you remember? Remember when he decided he was just going to run? <laughs> and he ran all the way across the United States. And like he, you know, he ran so, so long, like his beard was growing really long. And people would get just magnetized, you know, to forest. And they'd come and they'd run along with him. Or when he just took on ping pong and he was like then the ping pong champion. <laughs> or he met his buddy and he started Bubba Gump Shrimp with him and their, their business flourished. You know, there was just all these things that, that occurred in his life because he was just showing up as the best of what he had to offer. No more, no less. That's a key to this, this agreement. It's, we get the less part, no less than our best, right? Because we have that achieving kind of thing. It's like just woven into our Western culture to be better and more and best. And, and it's beautiful because it, it, it's that becomingness of us. And we take that on in our spirituality in, in New Thought. We talk a lot about like what we are becoming. But it's important to know that this agreement is not just about doing our best and our best and our better best, but it's also no, no more than our best. It's not about overdoing. It's not about overachieving. In the book, Don Miguel talks about this man who comes, he, he wants to transcend suffering. And so he goes to the Buddhist temple, the local Buddhist temple, and he asks to speak with the, the master of the temple. And he says, how long will it take me to transcend suffering if I meditate four hours a day? And the master says, hmm, I, perhaps 10 years. And so the man thinks, oh, I could do better than that. And so he says, how long will it take me to transcend then if I meditate eight hours a day? And the master says, Hmm, maybe 20 years? <laughs> and the guy's like, huh? I mean, if I work harder, you know, and I do it more, it should happen quicker, right? And the master says, that's not the point. It's not the point of your life to sacrifice your life. You're, the point of your life is to enjoy life, to live your life fully, to love to experience, to have fun. So maybe you can do your best in two hours of meditation a day and have the fullness of life that comes with that instead of eight hours a day that are gonna feel tiresome and, and, and drain your energy. And so it's that reorienting for ourselves that it's not about more and better and exhausting ourselves, even though we are also talking about pushing limits. It's, it's not that kind of limit because it's when we're pushing those kinds of limits, there's that underlying sense of there's not enough, right? Or I'm not enough. There's that underlying sense of lack or inadequacy that's sort of fueling that. It's just really important about this agreement to, to embody that, to remember what, what he says about the impeccable idea that our best is the best we can do without going against ourselves. And so if we can just use that as our guideline, the best is the best I can do without going against myself because we want to be integrity with ourselves, right? Because who are we? Spirit or maybe divine earth, you know? <laughs> I was um, 
you know, this is a, a common experience for me when I get home. We, our, our five-year-old goddaughter, Grace, lives with us and her mother. And often, I'll, as soon as I walk in the door, um, I'll hear, Kristen, will you play with me? <laughs> yeah. And it's really hard because I'd like to do it a lot more. And I find that I am, I find like the dialogue is pretty constant. No, I can't do that right now. I got to go do this. I got to go do that. And then it's become, now it's become, she prefaces it, and she lives with three adults that have full lives, so she prefaces it, this with, for a lot of us. When you're done working, would you play with me? I know, it's just like heartbreaking, right? So this week I was like, okay, I cannot ha continue to have this dialogue, right? So I said, okay, before you go to bed, the last 30 minutes we're gonna do whatever you wanna do before you go to bed. So we have been building forts in the living room with blankets over all the furniture, and bringing in all the bears and the bunnies, all of her friends, and like reading books to the bears and bunnies with flashlights and doing all kinds of really fun, cool things. And it, is, it brings her so much joy and delight, so therefore it brings me so much joy and delight. And I think, you know, it isn't very much that I'm offering, but it's the best I can offer. And she's thrilled. And so I think if we remember that from that very kind of childlike place, a sort of Forrest Gumpish, you know, <laughs> adult-like, childlike place, that kind of innocence that we all are in, that we have needs, and it doesn't mean we can fulfill each other's needs or meet each other's expectations to the fullest, but what we can do is do what feels true and right for us. What's our best? What's the best we can offer? And then be clear, because remember, as we've talked about, clear is kind. Clear is kind. So we get clear within ourselves. We get clear with each other. Then we're not going against ourselves, but we're also offering our best. It's a great gift when we, I think, fully really embrace this agreement in all of those ways, no more, no less. So we've been down this journey, and I just want to kind of touch upon the other three agreements as well. <laughs> The first one, to be impeccable with our word. And remember, just a few reminders from that. That's about saying what you mean and meaning what you say and saying something when you need to say it. But most of all, I think the essence of that one, the one that I feel the most strongly is, is that from that scripture that opens up the book of John. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And when you think about that, that when you speak, when you are impeccable with your word or when you're not, that's God that you're bringing forth. Or whatever, if that term doesn't work for you, divine spirit, whatever word works for you. Don't get tripped up with the words because we're talking about the word. <laughs> but just thinking about you're bringing forth that. It's like, wow, what I've been charged with, right? What we've been charged with, to be impeccable with our word, to bring forth God into the word, world. And so that means that the word is so powerful that it has the power to create and it has the power to destroy. The word has the power to heal and it has the power to wound and injure. And so it's like how I use that word matters, for how you, we use it to ourselves, our own self-talk, as well as how we share with others. That has this really, and, and then there's sort of a, some guiding how-to that kind of helps us shape, use it when we put this agreement in use, to ask ourselves before we say what, whatever it is we're going to say, is it true, is it kind, is it necessary? That last one gets me a lot more quiet. <laughs> but there, there's the nice guidelines. The second one is don't take anything personally. A tough one for all of us, I know. <laughs> but what I find with that one is that it's helpful to think of it in both directions once again. It's not just about not taking things personally when something critical is said or some, something judgmental. Um, just to remember that we're all kind of living from the best that we have, right? And so when somebody says something, it's, it says more about them. It's more about them than it is about us. And so, but also the other way too, when we hear really wonderful things about ourselves, to not take that personally either. Doesn't mean we can't be gracious and, and appreciative, but it's, it's more about knowing that, that that's a, 
a reflection of being the spirit that we are in the world and not getting attached to needing to hear those good words. And so if we remember this simple mantra for that agreement, neither praise nor blame defines me. That one really helps us kind of stay on that agreement. Neither praise nor blame defines me. It's not who I am. The, the third agreement is don't make assumptions. And we talked about, you know, we commit a, sui a suicide <laughs> when, we, when we make assumptions. Because what happens uh, when we do that is, is we can kill conversations, wound relationships, create wedges between groups of people, and, you know, all of that stuff that comes with assumptions. So what we can do instead is test our assumptions. You know, ask questions. Ask and test it out and see. Is that really what you meant? Is that what I'm hearing? Is that correct? You know, that kind of thing goes, goes miles and miles and miles in relationship. Anybody experience that? If you test your assumptions, it really opens things up for relationship. And so um, we talked about, you know, keeping it fresh and, and staying curious and using the work from Byron Katie as our guide there. There's four really great questions that we can ask ourselves. Is it true, whatever it is we're about to assume or we're assuming? Can I know it's absolutely true? This is where the assumption starts to break down, right? Who am I when I believe it's true? And who am I when I don't believe that's true anymore? Who am I being if that's not the truth or if I didn't believe it? So that really brings us into a whole nother place. And when we get to that last one, often it's like, oh, you know, you start to feel the freedom, the expansion, the happiness that what these agreements are all about, keeping these agreements, that it brings forth that sort of natural truth of who we are. So that's the journey we've been on together. And I, I really like, there's a testimonial at the end of, this is a second book that goes with the four agreements. It's called the Companion Book. And so I'd like to just read this last part to you because she touches on the agreements in several different ways that I find really helpful. And so if you'll bear with me, I'm going to read to you. <laughs> Settle in for a little story, everyone. <laughs> That's right, teddy bears and tents, flashlights, all welcome. <laughs> she says, I devoured the four agreements in one afternoon, when, and when my husband came home, I could not stop talking about the book. The next day, he listened to the book on tape while commuting to work. When he got home, we talked, maybe for the first time ever. We talked about the way we'd been taking each other's comments personally, about all the assumptions we had made about each other, and mostly about we, how we hadn't been impeccable with our word. I had been speaking to my husband as if he were my enemy. He had been thinking of me as his enemy and moving toward protecting himself from me. We made the decision to keep these four agreements alive in ourselves and in our relationship. And now my husband is no longer my enemy. He is my ally. Keeping these four agreements transformed our life from one of conflict into one of companionship. I also passed the four agreements on to a woman who works in a homeless shelter, and she was thrilled, and I was thrilled, to find out that the staff was devouring the book, just as I had. One day she called in high drama, totally engulfed in the he said, she said of what was going on. And I had to say to her, why are you taking this personally? The drama disappeared in a second. My sister was ending a 26-year marriage and was in complete melodrama about the whole situation. I sent her the four agreements, and after reading the book once, her relationship was transformed into one of respect, compassion, and that they were able to dissolve the, the marriage with a lot of that kind of love and, and respect amiably. What I have learned is that my emotional pain is never about the other person. It's, about, it's never about my spouse, my children, my parents, my friends, the stranger in the grocery store. It's always and only about me. 
When everyone else is thinking or doing is never about me, it's, al it's always about them. What an incredible relief. So I want to encourage all of us to continue to keep these agreements and work these agreements. And one of the things I want to speak to is the, um, personally, about the impeccable with your word one. Um, when I read the one section where he talks about black magic and white magic, my gut just always sort of twists. <laughs> Because for me, I wouldn't use those terms, and I don't. And I've promoted this book and these agreements now, so I feel like I have to clean up that part of it. Because, you know, those are terms we use for people in the world, and and the idea of black magic is negative, and the idea of white magic is positive, and we don't need to perpetuate those stereotypes anymore, do we? Um, and I did learn from somebody at the 930 service that they believed that that was actually a mistranslation, that the, in the Spanish, that the, the way that he talked about, the Toltecs talked about what gets written in the English version as black magic and white magic were actually different terms. But it's really important to me that, that those terms don't be used as because we use them for people to be used as a sort of perpetuating these kinds of negative, positive ideas. Um, so I would just encourage you to search your own heart. You won't ever hear me use, or I hope you never hear me use those terms, um, and, and to find different terms for the same idea. You know, we talk a lot about shadow and light or, you know, that kind of thing. But, but try not to use those kinds of terms that perpetuate more divisiveness and, and more of the kinds of things we don't want to see in the world. So I, I also think the more that we speak to these things, you know, we might think that they're subtle or they're just within ourselves. But it's important, I think, that we share it with others. And so that's why I'm even talking about it, so that when we notice things that we think are just, oh, it's just a little nuance, or I'm just going to let it go, I'll let it roll off my back, it's worth it. To those, that little moment of hiccup, that little moment of you know, twisted gut, or whatever that feeling is, it's worth addressing, because that's what builds our connections. That what's, that's what builds our community. And so if we are a community that practices the four agreements, that practices the five principles of unity, and, and I know we are, the more serious we get about that and the more we walk this path together, the more freedom and happiness and amazement and, and you know, all the things that, that we want to achieve and experience and, and know in this world will, will be true for us and, our, and in ourselves, individually and as a community. So... It's good work, isn't it, the four agreements? And, and it's um, and, and this coming back to this last one, I just really want to emphasize this idea that always doing our best is no more, no less. It's also about self-kindness. That's a really important piece of that. So let's know that together as we close out this series with always do my best, with this affirmation, I always do my best, no more, no less. Together? I always do my best. No more, no less, and so it is.